Hello again, friends. Welcome to Gamecock Central Radio. Emerson Phillips with Gamecock great Joe Rett. Big night for the Gamecocks last night. Senior night, a home win for the Gamecocks over Mississippi State. 63-57 the final. Joe, the Gamecocks came out cold. Mississippi State rallied from 10 down in the second half to take a two-point lead with about four minutes left in the ball game. But the Gamecocks controlled the contest the remainder of the way, a 13-5 to Gamecock run to finish the ball game. And the Gamecocks win it by six. So, Joe, the Gamecocks win on senior night. They clinch a top-four seed and a double bye in next week's SEC tournament. And another win toward the NCAA tournament push that the Gamecocks are trying to make this year. I thought it was interesting, Joe, after the game, Thornwell said that he wasn't sure the Gamecocks have done enough to get in the tournament because they had about the same record last year and did not get in. So he's still forward thinking here, Joe. He's still thinking about winning Saturday at Ole Miss in the regular season finale and making sure the Gamecocks get in the tournament. Yeah, and that was nice to hear him say that. Um, you, you never can rest on um, your win so far this year. you got to continue. you got to finish. You know the process. Uh, you can't take next. You can't. You shouldn't have took last night lightly, and you should, definitely shouldn't take this old Miss game coming up on Saturday lightly. But uh, to 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 hear him say that, that that's he's trying to also be a coach. He's trying to be a coach, trying to motivate his guys. Cause he know what he wants to do. This is last year, his last game playing in CLA last night. So he definitely didn't want to want to end that way. But um, if he told me before the game that we we would shoot thirty four percent on the game and win, I, I would I would never believe you. But surprisingly enough, they did enough to handle their business at home and won last night. Final home game for Gamecock seniors. Dwayne Notice, Justin Mackey, and Cinderius Thornwell. The Gamecocks started one of 11 from the floor. They missed their first 10 threes in this ball game. But again, the Gamecocks took a 10-point lead with about 11 minutes left. And then Mississippi State hit back-to-back threes to cut it to 45-41. And with 4.26 left, Mississippi State hit a three to take a 52-50 lead. And this is a Mississippi State team that had lost six games in a row and eight of nine coming in. So there they were with a two-point lead. But Dwayne Notice would hit a foul shot with 3.11 left to put the Gamecocks in front for good. And then Notice hit his only field goal of the ball game uh, on an assist from Cinderius Thornwell. Notice knocked down a three. Gamecocks closed on a 13-5 run and won it 63 to 57. So, Joe, uh, Carolina's 22 and 8 now, and they're 12 and 5 in SEC play. They've wrapped up a top four seed in the double bye in next week's SEC tournament in Nashville. And Frank Martin has increased the Gamecocks conference win total the last four years. Listen to this, Joe. Five wins in 2014, six conference wins in 2015, 11 last year, and 12 and counting this year. South Carolina will play at Ole Miss to wrap up the regular season coming up on Saturday night. More on that in just a moment. But uh, Frank Martin's fifth year, Joe, has taken him some time to build a program. But Thornwell, Notice, and Mackey, the seniors, have anchored this program, and Carolina looks to be headed toward a big dance for the first time since 2004. Well, when you look at the, the outlook at uh, any coach in his first four to five years, um, that fourth year is when you, you really want to see uh, your team improve. And each year, Frank has improved. So <laughs> when you talk about job security, I think he's pretty pretty secure right now. Um, one of the few coaches that came through had, that has done that. And like you said, each year he's improved, uh, not only overall, but winning in the SEC, which is great. I mean, it's so awesome for us. You want to see, um, you know, he's established we have a program now. And, and uh, if I was a kid coming up, why, why not come to South Carolina and, and be part of, you know, something special? We got a lot of what ifs out there. You got a lot of things that, that haven't been accomplished in years, um, such as um, Sendera Stonewell possibly, where well, my opinion should be the SEC player of the year. We never had that in our company. We had some first teamers before, but never, to my knowledge, that we had a player of the year. So um, there's a lot of lot of things out there, a lot of goals that, that can be attained. And, and, you know, if you're a recruit out there, hey, why not come to South Carolina and be a part of this program? Because he's, he's definitely getting the job done. When you're improving your wins every year, you got guys that, that, that's been a part of this program. You got all Americans on this team. Hey, why not be a part of a, a great program? You know, that's, uh, on the upward, on the upward um, level right now. Gamecock Central Radio, Emerson Phillips with Gamecock great Joe Rett. Glad to have you along today. We invite you to download the Gamecock Central Radio app. We've got this free phone app. 
that allows you to listen to our podcast on your cell phone, anywhere you receive cell phone service. You can listen to our Gamecock Central Radio podcast. The podcasts are free. The app is free. Download the app on the App Store and on Google Play. And subscribe to our podcast on iTunes, SoundCloud, and other popular services, or just visit radio.gamecockcentral.com. So the Gamecocks with 22 points from Cinderius Thornwell last night, 17 of those coming in the second half. Chris Silva had his third career double-double with 15 points and 11 boards, 9 points for P.J. Dozier, 6 for notice, just the one field goal, but it was a big one very late in the ball game that helped the Gamecocks Clinch the win. Five for Mike Coatsar, four for Rothfelder, and two for Hassani Gravit. Also worth pointing out, Joe Th- Thornwell had made 33 consecutive free throws, and that streak came to an end. Uh, 33 straight over four games last night, and the streak did come to an end, but he was 11 of 12 at the foul line. So uh, we could do a full show. We could fill an hour talking about uh, Thornwell and what he has meant to this Gamecock team this year. But just another interesting footnote involving Cinderius Thornwell. You know, I frequently lament the poor foul shooting in the college game today, but Cinderius Thornwell, one of the best 33 straight free throws he had made. That streak came to an end last night. So the 12 conference wins, Joe, second most in Gamecock history, uh, behind only the great 1997 team that went 15-1 and in the league and won the SEC regular season championship. So now, you know, the only thing that remains to be settled here, Joe, with this Ole Miss game on Saturday night is will the Gamecocks finish third or fourth in the SEC and will they have the three seed or the four seed for next week's conference tournament? Arkansas plays at Florida Wednesday night of this week. So if Arkansas loses at Florida, Florida obviously a favorite in that game, uh, the Gamecocks would take a one-game lead ahead of Arkansas, and South Carolina will have to finish one game clear of the Razorbacks, Joe, because Arkansas won in Columbia several weeks ago. Yeah, certainly uh, we want to handle our business. We don't want to be focused on what uh, Florida and that Arkansas game is, but you know, as you and I in, in Gamecock fans, we definitely could look at being the number three seed to avoid uh, uh, Kentucky in the uh, – and in, 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 we wouldn't meet them until the finals in, in right. the SEC conference. So that's what we're looking at. We could look at that, but uh, as a team, they should not look at that. They should just go out and handle their business. Uh, don't even worry about the Florida-Arkansas game. Go out Saturday night and, and you know, keep playing the way they – you know, keep winning. Uh on a two-game winning streak right now, you want to go in to postseason play definitely with momentum, and we certainly have that. It's not pretty. It's not always pretty, but the outcome sometimes is as long as you're winning, hey, that, you, you tend to, as, as fans and players, you tend to forget about some of the, the previous losses. So when you win, whether well, it's pretty ugly, it, it, it calms the nerves a little bit. All right, Kentucky wrapped up the SEC regular season championship with their win over Vanderbilt Tuesday night. Florida's clinched the number two seed. And it's between South Carolina and Arkansas for the number three seed. Arkansas has got two conference games left at Florida Wednesday night. And then Arkansas will play at home against Georgia in a 2 o'clock tip on Saturday. So, Joe, how important is that three seed? You know, we talked about it last week. Maybe you want to avoid Kentucky until the finals. But let's face it, Joe, if you're going to win the SEC tournament, you're going to have to beat Kentucky in all likelihood at some point. So whether it's the semis or the finals, how much of a difference does that really make? It makes a difference, but you know, once you get in the tournament, um, you want to forget all that. It's, it's a good thing that we will avoid um, uh, fifth or sixth seed when you play a couple more games. So we're in a good position to be uh, have that double eliminate, I mean, a double buy at this point. Um, but, uh, you know, Regardless of how you look at it, you don't want to be, you want to beat the best. Hey, you don't want to play Kentucky. Uh, regard, and, and then you're going to have Florida. So either matchup is there. We've seen that it's, it's a tough game for us either way. But, uh, like I said, once you get in that tournament, one and done, you know, anything can happen. You know, Kentucky's been there. Florida's been there. And, and you know, they, they, they have, they've been used to the moment. So, cause they've been there so many times. We haven't been there. So hopefully we can get in and have a lot of confidence and, and, and possibly win our first conference tournament. So. Hey, anything to happen? Any doubt that the Gamecocks are in the NCAA tournament right now, Joe? That's a tough question. You, you listen to the uh, pundits out there. Joe Lenardi has us right now as a 6 7 seed. Am I comfortable with that? No, not right now because we've seen what happened last year. So uh, we need a couple more wins to solidify that. I went on, Friday, uh, went on Saturday and maybe a couple wins in, 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 the, SEC, in the SEC conference tournament. We'll definitely um, be in there. But right now with, what, 21, 22 wins, 
I'm not 100 percent sure that we're we're a lock for that because a lot of things happen once you get in the tournament. Those teams that uh small conference tournament sometimes they knock out and get those at large bids and 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 somehow that that trickle down and, and a lot of teams that you think are in are not in and that possibly was the case last year. So uh, we just need to handle that business. Win win on Saturday and then possibly try to get at least get to the championship on. In the SEC tournament. All right, Ole Miss is having a good year. They've won four of their last five. They're nine and seven in league play. The four wins over Auburn, LSU, Mississippi State, and Missouri. And granted, those four are at the bottom of the standings right now in the SEC. The one loss uh, during this five-game stretch for Ole Miss was at Arkansas. But, uh, you know, they're still – on the outside of the bubble, they they still have NCAA tournament hopes. They need to beat the Gamecocks Saturday night, and then they need to make a run in the SEC tournament. Maybe they can still get into the big dance. So plenty of motivation and incentive for the Ole Miss Rebels coming up. 8.30 tip Saturday night at Ole Miss. It'll be televised on the SEC Network. That'll get us set for the SEC tournament at Bridgestone Arena in Nashville next week. Starts on March the 8th, and the double buy very important because the Gamecocks will not have to play for the first two days of that tournament. Joe, if you don't get the double bye, you got to win five ball games to win the SEC tournament. But if you get the double bye, if you're a top four seed, you only have to win three. Yeah, so if hopefully, luckily we, we're in that position we get that double bye. But you've seen team. I mean, it, it's very tough. But you have seen team get hot in those tournaments and, uh, you know, sometimes come out and win it or at least get to the championship. But, uh, you know, Ole Miss is a team that's going to be fighting for us, fighting. They, they, they are a team that's on the ball, but that's trying to get into the tournament. So they have a lot of motivation. We have a lot of motivation as well because I don't think, like some Darius Dunwell said, we, he, he's not 100% sure that they're in. And, you know, this is a, a, a competitive game because you talk about AK and Kennedy, who is uh, one of Frank Martin's best friends. Uh, they coached together back in, I believe, in Cincinnati. And, you know, I, I don't think they really, really like playing against each other like that, but it's still competitive. And, and, you know, uh, going down to Ole Miss will be different. So they're a hot team. Uh, they got a senior, Sebastian Saez, who's been there, uh, the last three to four years, who's been playing really, really well. He will present a problem for our big guys, Coach Sar and, 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 and Silver this on Saturday. So it's a very, very tough game. Very, very, uh, needed win for both teams. But, uh, yeah. hopefully we can go down there and, and solidify ourselves in, in the SEC and the NCAA. All right, the Gamecocks need a win and an Arkansas loss to clinch the number three seed. So Arkansas at Florida and home against Georgia, and the Gamecocks with just the one conference game left at Ole Miss on Saturday. So we will put a wrap on the basketball report for this week. Joe and I will come back next week here on Gamecock Central Radio. We'll preview the SEC tournament. Joe, March is upon us. Let the madness begin, my man. That's right, man. This is one of my exciting times of the year, and uh, hopefully we will be dancing this year. We can break that break that trend of not getting in, and hopefully we, once we get in, we can win. Right. And, and, you, and it, like I say, anything can happen, man. Exciting time of year. I was surprised last year. I was very surprised the Gamecocks did not get in the tournament. But the three losses to Georgia and the third coming in the SEC tournament, I, I was not. it didn't sit well, Joe, and I was not completely shocked shocked that the Gamecocks did not get in last year. I was surprised but not shocked. I will be shocked if the Gamecocks are not in the NCAA tournament this year. So we're going to find out real soon. Uh, SEC tournament next week and Selection Sunday coming up after the SEC tournament. So a lot to talk about next week. Joe, let's get together next week. We'll preview the conference tournament. Great talking Gamecock basketball with you. Thank you. All right, my man. Have a good one. All right, that's Joe Rett, Gamecock great. I'm Emerson Phillips, and this is Gamecock Central Radio. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> 